Let me just recap us. A dare. What about dad? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. What a dad. What about dad? What is cracking, everybody? Bam, 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 bam. We're back from holiday break. Bam, 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 bam. Air guns, air guns. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Um, so we're back from all of our shenanigans. Uh, Jen was across the uh, country in Cali living her best life, doing her best things. Jen, how are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to get started today. Yes, yes, yes. So it might sound a little different. We might be a little loud and ridiculous because today we are playing a board game it's Love. game night at it, jen's house it's game night at jen's house sorry let me tell them about this night okay so, like sometime this afternoon around like 12 i was just like shooting the shit and i was like you know what i'm gonna make a stir fry and then i was like you know what fuck that i'm gonna make a stir fry and an apple pie Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like what am I gonna do? So I texted Dare and I was like, hey, stir fry night, my house. And then stir fry night became apple pie stir fry. And then from there, it became game night. And then from there, it became <laughs> podcast game night, apple <laughs> pie, Supergirl crossover binge, and two bottles of Prosecco. Woo woo. And then Brusco. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what we are. How are you? What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just hanging out. Um, we're about to play a game. Yeah, what's the game called? So, I'm a huge, like, tabletop giant, person. Giant. Giant nerd. I'm one of those people with, like, a board, a wall of board games. So, tonight we're playing a two-player game. It's called Jaipar. Jaipur? Jaipar. I'm not sure how that Jaipur? sounds. Jaipur? I don't know. It's J-A-I-P-U-R. Let us know what you call it. <laughs> it's it's a geological place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so it's a game about, it's a two-person ga competitive game about the economy in lieu of the tax bill that just passed. So the object of the game. <laughs> it's great. A, the object of the game is we, Adair and I are competitor, competitive uh, trader, traders, and we are trading goods. We are trading goods to try and get the most money. There's three rounds. At the end of each round, we count up our points, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then whoever gets the best of three wins the games. So the goods involved that we will be trading tonight are one, leather, Ooh. two, silk, but we call them ma magic, carpet. magic carpets, <laughs> <laughs> uh, three, <laughs> three spices, and I'm telling you this in ascending order so you'll know the value. Four, silver, five, gold, and six diamonds. Yeah. So the person to sell the most of you know of the most precious metals really wins. And that's the game. And in, in the game there's a few cam there's uh, there, there's camels and the camels they they act like this. They they just basically move cards from the middle of the the table into your hand. You can only have seven goods in your hands at one time. You can have as many camels in your hands at all times. Yeah. And at the end of the, each round, the person with the most camels wins um, a camel token. U ultimately, as we call it, the camel toe. The camel pin. toe, yeah. <laughs> but Extremely tight pants pulled up. It's true. The front. <laughs> just just the at the front. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the camels are some bullshit, guys. Like, that's ultimately all you have to know about this. So what we're going to do today for our, uh, our cast, we are going to be talking about different things that we wanted to cover in separate podcasts, but just literally had no time. The holidays are upon us, and we have to speed cast. We have to speed cast. So we're going to play some games, enjoy our time, and talk about some stuff. We're going to uh, touch upon Carmilla, because we didn't get to it. We're going to do some... Crossover. Crossover. We're going to talk about Christbug and his fired ass. We're going to talk about that now. <laughs> Mon hell. Because we promised you that. You know you want to hear it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there might be some salty shade in there, but, you know, we're all prepared for it. We Question, know what we is this a salty cast? Do it's not a salty cast. A sal salty no, this, cast? Is, this is just a, a live, just a good old time board game chatter. Okay, so you this is like saying? a shooting the shit cast. Shooting the shit cast, yes. Boom, boom. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> shooting the shit, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm great with that. It's right. becoming a segment moving forward. Yeah. Now, Dara and I are going to look at the cards, and as we look at the cards, I'm I, 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 at each other's cards. English, Jen. <laughs> I, I get too excited sometimes. 
<laughs> at each other's. We're gonna look at our own cards, and I'm gonna, I guess, ask the first question because let me just be real with you guys. Adair is a huge Carmilla fan. She's like a huge Carmilla fan. I saw them in New York when they went to the pop up shop for You Buy Kotex, and that was awesome. And I was all awkward and weird, and I was like nerdy, and I she don't get sweaty. flustered. I've worked in the industry, and I've seen very famous stars, and I gave zero Fs about their lives. I saw these two ladies, and I couldn't keep my shit together. So there's that. She was sweating from her face. I wasn't from sweating. Her I looked fits. absolutely amazing. That's really what <laughs> was happening. Her knees. Yeah, um, that is that is a place I've never seen. It. I have quite a bit. Well, yeah, well, uh, there's that. There's that. There's that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, yeah. So uh, today I actually sat down and I watched the Carmela movie. I got it online for nine ninety nine, the freshman bundle, and I saw it. So I feel prepared. Because Jen is a freshman. I've been watching Carmilla since it dropped on, uh, make, before they called it kind of TV, Verve TV. And then I watched the movie. I got I got the, sen- like the senior, you've been here for way too long package. Which yeah. Which is everything. Yeah. And so we're coming at this from two different perspectives. We're talking about, I guess I'm the freshman, you're the senior. It's true. So the sophomore, junior. Pim, 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 senior, senior. I have four <laughs> more years before I make decisions about my life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just stupid. Anyway, so um, yeah, I guess we'll play our first round. We'll talk Camilla. Our second round, we'll switch topics. We'll talk about something new. Something new. Let's do it. All right. So I'm looking at my five cards, and they are amazing, children. Can I just tell you? That's because she shuffled the deck, which Absolutely. is just like some bullshit. I'm an amazing shuffle shuffler, deck, but I am a terrible shuffler. She is a terrible shuffler. So I'm just letting you guys know that this is a thing that's happening. She shuffles in her favor. Just saying. See, the thing is, so I would be playing music right now or something, but, like, you know, YouTube wants to be completely terrible with their copyright laws. So anybody got time to play any... Is that really it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would play well-known music. We would be having a great old time right now with that that music, but they really are the worst. Um, So do you want to go first, or I'm, I'm going uh, first? Um, I will go first. I'm going to look at the market. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In the market, I see a magic carpet, and I see a spice. I only really want the highest value of anything so mm-hmm. i'm gonna grab the spice it's worth a little bit more than the magic carpets so i'm trading a leather for some spices well that is unattractive card play but i will actually deal with it um yeah so oh i have to i have to take one right yeah it's your turn and i mean i have to put no i have, I have to put one down that's what i mean right yeah you buy or sell something well you know what? i'm gonna take these camels <laughs> the ladies let's i'm gonna just take these single ladies right here give me that all right so what do you think about the Carmilla? Um, I know that you're, you know, like we said, she's kind of like the new person to this whole franchise. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm not. I've been there since it was Verve TV and all that goodness. So, yeah, what do you think com- I, compared to, you know, everything going on? All right, well, I'm going to be real with you. I watched up to season two. What? And then, I know. And then I decided to just, you know, shit, I'm going to watch the movie. So I got the movie today about the freshman pack. I watched the whole thing. It was great. I baked an apple pie. That was also great. Um, it was delicious. It was delicious. I thought that the movie had some really, really... I th- one of the things that I liked about this movie mm-hmm. was that if you don't know the Carmela world or if you skipped watching season three and just went straight for the movie, uh, the steak and potatoes, if you <laughs> will, like somebody I know. <laughs> then they do a really great job of recapping you mm-hmm. and getting you up to speed so you can be just somebody who's new to the verse, the world, and know exactly what's happening or have a strong sense of what's happening. You don't feel lost. Um, I would say my favorite aspect of the movie is Carmela herself. I just, she's my favorite character in the series since season one. And seeing her on the big screen, moving, talking in another room other than the one she was in. Yeah. <laughs> Being able to move to another bedroom or any other room. Yeah, having to, multiple sets. I loved that. And I, I think this actress really uh, reads well on film. I think she reads well on film because she's so subtle and she's very underplayed as her... Car- her Carmela is very underplayed and subtle and she's so gentle but she's also very dangerous. And so yeah. I, I love that that counterbalance between this character that you have this this predator and then you have this gentle person. And I loved her conflict. I thought it was great, you know. She was made into a human. And that storyline, I loved it. I thought about when I saw that, she gets turned human, 
I thought of Pinocchio. She gets to be a real boy or a real girl. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was sweet. And I loved her conflict, the notion that she is trying to decide what to do with her life now that she has has a life and she knows the value of life having had lost one. So I thought that was a, a very compelling conflict, source conflict for her. I felt that Laura, you know, you see Laura and she's as neurotic as ever <laughs> and she's choosing to delegate her life in another way and she sees it as a human still sees it. So I thought that was a great opening conflict and that was probably my favorite element of the movie. <laughs> um, other Second favorite element of the movie was seeing Dominique from Winona mm -hmm. and I thought I needed more of her. Like if we could have cut maybe... I don't know how they would have done this. I see. I'm not. I didn't write it, so I don't know. But if we could have like gone, we just. I wanted more. Dominique. Dominique I mean, as L. Period. Nobody's mad about that. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Um. You actually touched upon something. By the way, Trigger. You actually touched upon upon something that I thought was really kind of interesting, because I have always been an Elise fan mm -hmm. who plays Laura from on the um from the play or from the web series because her acting is very stage and a little bit more upfront. Um, I appreciated that. And I always felt like I didn't get to see Natasha's full potential as an actor because it was too subtle for stage. That's what I felt. Which is funny because, you know, she's done a lot of theater and uh, stuff like that. So it was like really interesting that Sophia Walker, who plays her sister, um, is very you know has that presence that vampire presence on a stage type thing and she reads really well on tv and also on on film you know and natasha reads really good in the film i thought she was like really awesome i was like oh there it is that's the talent that i thought i saw before but it just wasn't as visceral i guess or i, I didn't really it didn't come across as well it didn't read but yeah. also one of the things that is interesting is that in Carmela, if you think about it, Elise is closer to the the camera. Mm -hmm. She's more tight on the camera most of the time. Yeah, yeah. You don't really get that many Carmela. I'm talking into the camera, but you get a lot of that from the Laura character. So if you think about it, if you're a you know someone who's playing something very subtly, you know, brooding vampire, mm -hmm. and you're playing, but you're playing deeper, and it's like a play where you're playing more upstage than downstage. Mm -hmm. So you're playing deeper and there's a one little room, you're then perfect. yeah, you're not gonna read because the camera, which is set for a closer lens, you know, set for to read off of Laura and whatever she's talking about, it can usually she's driving the storyline, it's not gonna pick up as tightly on what she's doing, those subtle reactions. Yeah, there are some great moments um, in this movie that I thought Natasha really kind of aced. They're, my favorite, I'll just say this, because it really, to me, showcased um, Elisa's acting, it showcased the nuance of Carmilla, that just that character, and all in all, the relationship is the moment where Carmilla decides she's going to allow herself to stay a vampire to save the other spirits in the house. And it's just her and Laura in that like moment talking about like, well, what if I want kids? What if I want grandkids? I thought, you know, how's it gonna look when you're 25? Yeah. And I thought that was the best acting I'd seen through all three seasons and all the stuff from both of them because it was just the heartbreak. There was actually two moments that I thought was great, but that was the main one where it's just a heartbreaking moment where you realize all you want is to be with somebody and there's this huge obstacle that eventually somehow is gonna have to get figured out um, or it won't, you know, and they just love each other until they can't, kind of like Bo and Lauren from mm, uh, yeah. Lost Girls, you know, and just that, that amazing monologue by uh, Laura and that breakdown of like, it's not gonna happen. She goes, well, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep running. And then the accepting of what Carmela just said, going, you're right. I know you're right, but this really sucks. Kind of swallowing her tears, swallowing her own self want. And then she just kind of smiles and goes, all right, let's 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 save these vampires. And that just, I mean, let's save these ghosts. And that shows her character. And that showed how connected they are, that they trust that they will be together no matter what happens. Mm. And allowing Carmilla to finally forgive herself and let go. I thought that was freaking, that was one of, I, I just, I really appreciated that scene and I appreciated that acting and I, I saw the growth from because I've been watching it for years and and then there was another real quick 
moment that I really enjoyed of this movie. It was the beginning, from the very, very beginning, when she's dreaming, when Laura's dreaming, and Carmilla she, uh, is like climbing on top of her and she goes, oh, I think I'm gonna love this dream. And then she wakes up and Carmilla's like biting her. And I thought this was absolutely excellent from Elisa's acting standpoint. The way she looked at Natasha and that like fear of like, you, you just bit me. Like, do you know what you just did? Do you know what just happened? was really fascinating to see because I actually felt for the first time Laura be scared of Carmilla mm -hmm. and the whole time you've never really seen her be scared of Carmilla like you kind of and especially in the first season I mean you it kind of alluded that she might be like ooh she's a vampire that's so intriguing but you never saw fear from Laura this is the first time in the whole thing to me that you actually see Laura be afraid of Carmilla which is also what was so stinging was seeing Natasha's reaction to Elise or uh, Carmela's reaction to Laura being scared of her because she had never wanted her to be scared of her in that moment you saw it and I was like that's that's finally good acting yes yes yes, yes. but um yeah no what else uh, did you think what about else? this what else um of? okay so and your turn Bobby. no it's your turn is it my turn I already did I took oh you took the camels the no I didn't I, I'm not gonna tell you what I took but I have it in my head well I mean you took the two and I put camels the reds I yes. saw that the ladies are back in the... The, the ladies saddle. are back in the saddle. And right. I'm going to just take these so, camels because... I guess the, the only thing is I feel like I would have liked to have seen more. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen more interaction between Dominique, the um, owl oh. character, and between Carmela. I was so... It's just after hearing such a backstory of her, she's really in season one a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, like, after hearing her backstory, knowing who she is to Carmela and getting those flashbacks so you see them getting stuck in the cycle i just really wanted to see that relationship between the two of them and i also would have liked to have seen it like i felt that al one of the things that i liked about this and one of the things that i wish i'd seen more of al i like that you knew exactly what she wanted she wanted her life back okay it's plain and simple it was very simple it wasn't complicated i want to live everyone else must die so i can live sounds about right but, uh, and i like that it was a strong motivation but I also would have liked to have seen her weakness be more Camilla because at one point they did love each other <laughs> and I felt like having Al be brought back into the picture and bringing up those emotions were so heavy for Camilla. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen what for, I would have liked to have seen Al care more for Camilla as like a, a character. I felt like she, I wanted to see more of a battle, emotional battle for, for the soul, morality, heart a manipulative battle between for the heart and soul of camilla between laura and al i want to see that the stakes be a little raised higher mm -hmm. so so we know that what we're, 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 we're trying to break you know camilla's guilt is causing her to cave into giving up her, her, her yeah. mortality and uh laura is trying to save her but also here's this other person who is probably the love of her life for the first part of a very long lifespan. So I just would I wanted more Al. I wanted more Al. I could have cut a lot of other stuff. The only other character I wanted more of besides Al was Fontaine. Love Fontaine, Fontaine, yeah. I felt like I missed her. Yeah. She disappeared in the background because there was so much story to happen happening. Yeah, um I I actually like the fact that they didn't try to make anything very um love triangle ish. Because that's not really, I mean, obviously, it's kind of like the Monel thing. He's away for seven years. Sorry he moved on. You know, you have to let it go. But it's not. Because um, it, it's not the Monel thing because I don't hate Elle. I have compassion for her. Well, yes, because but that's because writing. Because season one, she, 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 her, she sacrifices herself. You know, Elle goes, you don't ever see her on camera, but she, like, she gets sacrificed or she, she dies and you know she had such a tragic existence and that it didn't work out between their history is well, so heavy the history is heavy but so i wanted to see heavier stakes no that could i could understand less of that. a blind i want my life back more of a you did this to me now make it right now i still kind of love you and i still can't entirely kill you and that was there i just wanted more of it i love no that. that i get and i think that um Yes, they could have had a little bit more stakes. I'm glad that they didn't make it a romantic stake. I think that there should have been a little bit more... Like, they tried to do it when 
Carmilla goes, well, I'll show her what being a vampire is all about again when she, you know, did something bad. And I think that her coming there, and once again, this is Dominique, brilliant acting, and I thought the line delivery was great by Natasha. It was just that simple, hello, Elle. And the, the kind of chill that went down Dominique's spine of hearing her name through Carmilla's mouth again was really good acting because you just see her kind of wince and she's just like mad because to me what it felt like was that when you have an ex who you really loved and you kind of will always love them and you see them again and they say your name it's both exciting it's both infuriating it's both sad and all those feelings rush back and you can see in Dominic's face that the way she's playing L when she said that all the feelings rush back and then you saw a little bit of anger and that's when she kind of turned and snapped at her because she still, as a soul, did have an emotional tie to Carmilla. But that's exactly what I wanted to see play. A little more. bit more, yeah. No, I and that's that, what I, I totally that did. That emotional yeah. tie to be a stronger, mo dr a, a stronger aspect, if not the central conflict. Never mind my life back. My life back because my life. Maybe like it doesn't have to be my love back, but it didn't have to be. I don't know, I just, I wanted to see the subtext become main text because it's been subtext all of season one because she's literally off the, off yeah. the. I, I don't, I she's, just, she's I want to make sure there was so no much, romancing, but I definitely think the relationship should have been. been so much backstory that when you come, when she comes, you know exactly who she is and what she meant. And you know what? I know you wanted to see no romance, but I wanted to see that for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, more or less their relationship should have been tied up better like their goodbyes and all that. I think you didn't have to do all you don't have to give them the resu resolution no I don't in a romantic way but no. there should have been a better resolution for Ellen Carmilla I wanted to see more of that complex I've known you for a hundred years I know you better than any other person bubble up more between her and Carmilla um maybe even have her um what's her name Al challenge Laura by how much she knows make shake her you know shake that foundation and that confidence she has in her and in that way, it's that's that's using, that's manipulating. That's not well, necessarily no, romantic. it is. And I think the th once again, because you only have one and two season going, there was a lot of, there's, it wouldn't have happened that way because of their building of their relationship season three. So like, it just wouldn't have come up. Like there would have been no foundation shaking for Laura from all the stuff that they not had. Not foundation from. into her relationship, but into her own insecurities. Yeah, Laura's no, all that stuff. Laura's somebody who is second guessing herself no and that all that stuff got fixed and not fixed but addressed no in she was three. still as neurotic as she was in the movie as she was in season one and two yes season. but not season three and then that neuroses was a little different it's hard to explain once again season three but like also your turn um there's a lot with that um okay so any you said you love La Fontaine I love the good LaFerry ship, which is uh, Perry and LaFontaine. Um, Annie Briggs is amazing, and so is Caitlin. Um, it's really cool to see a person who is a non-binary character, you know, and it's cool. I love freaking LaFontaine. They're awesome. So um, that's always fun. I love Kirsch. I love the fact that they gave... Um, Melanie, uh, what is her actual name? Yeah, Melanie. Um, a love interest within the sister. I love that. And that, that was, was great. I was like, what? I couldn't remember her name. But yes, um, I thought that was great. You know, as far as the movie is concerned, and as far as like representation and having a decent movie, I thought it was solid. I thought that, I actually, to be quite honest, the things that I flipped out about was the end <laughs> when Sophia Walker showed up and she's like, the anglerfish. Laid an alarming amount of eggs. Get your girlfriend <laughs> and let's get on the road. I love that. And they left it like, open for like, uh, yes. another. They left it open for another series. But the thing is, I loves me some Sophia Walker. That bitch is fierce as fuck. And so I'm like, yes, bitch, come through. No, like, <laughs> I, I, I like that they left it open. I like, I like that they left the conflict unresolved. Um, yeah, but that was pretty much. Pretty yeah, much no, I love, I love a good Sophia Walker. I was like, yes, ma'am, you better work. The only one person missing was uh, Danny from... And she showed up a little bit, but I think it was she because of um, yeah. scheduling conflicts. What's she working on? Um, she works on a web series called Swerve. If you guys have not seen it, watch it. I've They're in season Swerve. two, and it's 
really, really good. It's really good. Um, I love the concept of it. I love a lot of it. I love Caitlin's acting. Um, once again, like how, I'm sorry, um, Sharon's acting, um, kind of like how they did Couplish. Sharon and um, Caitlin did Couplish. And that was an awesome web series. You guys all saw it. And I think that it really helped shape Sharon's um, acting ability. And in Swerve, I'm like, yes, what? like I just want, <laughs> it's weird because I keep seeing everybody in different um, web Shows, series yeah. and things like that. And they're so much better than when they were in Carmilla. And not to, you know, not Carmilla, but I'm like, guys, you're really like killing it right now in this, on these different web series. So like, I like the fact that this has helped them train to be better actresses and actors and things like that. And yeah, so I really, I really loved it. Any other thoughts about Carmilla before we move on? Um, I think that's good. I, I, I feel comfortable with what, what we've talked about. Today. Now, where are we?